have. I mean, sometimes it's lack of experience and maturity. Which um, we've spoken about many a time. Right. Um, oh, which, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my God. I Hold on. Let me fucking strap myself in. Hold on. I'm putting my fucking seatbelt on. Enjoy. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I woke ready. Nicola up this morning at some ungodly hour. This podcast may contain adult themes. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The views and opinions in this podcast are expressly our own. When I get to the workplace, I like to fuck shit up. Honestly, every time I try to do something fun or exciting, you make it not that way. Hey, are you tired of toxic workplaces and the negativity that comes with them? We hear you and we're here to shake things up. Welcome to Let's Break Up Toxic Workplace Stories, the podcast that's all about breaking up with workplace toxicity. I'm Nicola and I'm here with my co-host Gina. Together, we're going to explore real life experiences of workplace toxicity and offer a sense of encouragement and unity. That's right. We're tackling the tough topic of negativity in the workplace. So join us each week as we explore the various forms of toxicity in the workplace. We'll be interviewing guests to share their experiences and offer practical solutions for dealing with workplace toxicity. Let's Break Up is quickly becoming the go-to source for anyone looking to share and then ditch the drama and help you break up with those toxic workplaces. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell all your friends. In this week's episode. Okay, so before we get started, are we introducing what we're doing? Yes. Yes. Well, sure. Yes, we are. We should. Sure we are. Okay. So what are we doing, Gina? What are we doing today? Tell so me what doing. we've had a lot of consultants or people who say they, they're kind of consultants. I've been a consultant. Um, people that have and, struggled with consultants. Yes. And during one of our more recent episodes, we had a whole conversation and somebody was like, I don't really want to call myself a consultant because it has like a negative connotation. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. And then I was like, wait, has anybody seen um, this new show on Amazon Prime called The Consultant? And Nicola and I kind of were like, maybe we should watch it. And so we binged the whole thing. And we were like, oh my God, this is such a great metaphor. Like it's, it's not only verbatim a toxic workplace but the metaphor there's like bigger things going on and so we were like why don't we just push out a little more content for our taxis I know you love that and I um, put it in an Instagram post you did and I'm proud I am proud um and we thought like what better way to make this even more relevant when you know Amazon Studios is coming out with this this whole series based on the idea of a consultant and how that impacts a company. A gaming company. So it kind of relates to our episode a little bit that we have coming up um, soon around Raina and her situation. She's in like sort of animation and gaming and that kind of stuff too. Absolutely. But um, I just, I forgot (laughs) that Nicola and I were going to live watch it. (laughs) So I went ahead and like watched it like two minutes before she and I are on this and I have like a whole host of notes which will probably come in handy we so. it will come in handy but we'll skip through the we'll skip through but we'll play some of the parts out because I think that'll be that'll be a fun time okay so let's preface this by saying it's the consultant it's episode season one episode one and it's called the uh, creator which I think is very interesting You know how that tends to go? Uh Uh-huh, yeah, but this time I decided to take your advice and I'm going to make him think that it's his idea. Okay, wait, so we've heard this before with some of our interviewees where they're like, we, I would have to like make sure people thought it was their own idea, even though it was mine to like push it forward. Yeah, we've heard it so many times. We've heard it a bunch of times. Okay, I also just wanted to point out that Elaine is talking about Sangwoo, who is now just been shot by one of the kids from the middle school that was visiting. Um, that she's like he's he's vain, he's conceited, he's disrespectful, he's all these things, but he's not a bad person. I'm sorry, what? I feel like you and I could describe that about the the COO and the CMO from where we met. 
but yeah. I would venture to say that maybe they're not bad people, but they're also not good people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can be on board with that. All right. Okay. Okay. Sang was dead, everyone. Dead burgers. Spoiler alert. I feel like we should <laughs> spoil it. So spoiler alert! Craig can't sleep. He goes for a run and he ends up at Compu- Compware? Compuware? Compware's headquarters. And why are we there at like fuck o'clock in the morning? Please. No one is I going to work at fuck o'clock I don't in the know. And as you can see, things ha- like we're just like, people just got up and left. Like things are half eaten, whatever. Then we see Elaine and she's removing a smoke detector. And we come to find out she's removing a camera. Camera. Uh, okay, so let's just pause there for a second. What sort of toxic, okay, why is she collecting the camera? It's like, is she stalking everybody? Is she watching the people? Like, why do we have cameras that people don't know about? Isn't that an invasion of privacy? Aren't it's you su- not. So but in America- Aren't you supposed to be aware of when you're being recorded? So in communal spaces where there's no expectation of privacy, like think about a mall, right? In the common areas, there typically are security cameras, even in stores. But if you're talking about like a changing room or a bathroom, by law, you can't put a camera there because there's the expectation of privacy. So I get that. Like I'm on board with that. And so I don't think there's an expectation of privacy within a workplace. So I think it's more than okay to have these video, you know, the security cameras within a workplace. Also, you know, there's probably like a security portion to it in terms of like, you know, employees doing like stealing things, whatever. Um, And Elaine goes on to say that it was Sang Wu, the creator his idea because he was kind of paranoid and he kept everything in the cloud air and air okay i feel like the terror that comes with this man is exactly just what like, happens when a consultant like fucking arrives at your gig right because you're like holy shit what's gonna happen is he gonna access all like what's gonna like this is not good so but also the weirdness of him arriving at like 3 a.m. in the morning while these two are the only two in in the otherwise shuttered office seems a little strange to me. Just keep it in your back pocket, like how this whole religious thing also is an undercurrent um, to what we're seeing so far. I wish to call a full staff meeting for tomorrow morning. Shall we say 9 a.m.? Okay, so here's where we actually see the consultancy documents. They're looking it over. But also, why is he giving them the documents? Is this like for his own validation? Or like, you know, like in a real life situation, you're not reading the consultancy documents. They're not like the top tier employees at this point. They're just like- No, they're like workers among workers. Yeah, exactly. So, but I may- so benefit of the doubt, um, okay. they're the only ones there and they were kind of like, dude, what are you doing? Like, so I think he's just, in my opinion, he's kind of um, making sure everyone understands his role and his importance. Yo, is he here? I don't know. I don't think he left. Okay, here we go. 9 a.m. meeting. Nobody knows what the hell's going on. This is his first big act. Good morning, comrades. Comrades? Okay, can we just talk about that use of word? I'm not against it. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'm not against it. And the only reason I'm not against it is because in some other cultures, it's more it's more akin to being a friend. I mean, I guess to us Americans, it's kind of a little like, yeah. Being replaced with that guy. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a little dicey. But I just think it's an interesting use of word words because he's really, this is where he starts to really set up the power dynamic and the strategy to make things sort of um, pure confusion and boundary crossing. So let's get into it. Unfortunately, Mr. Sang cannot be with us today, but he sends his best regards. 
That's so weird. The guy's dead. To the wonderful faces I see below, thank you for being an important part in Compware's success. I'm looking forward to getting to know you all personally. You're valued. Here's, he says, you're valued. And then in the very next breath, very next he says, if you're, if for all those who are not here, who are remote, if you're not here within the next hour, your contract is terminated or your employment is terminated. Who work remotely, you have exactly one hour to get here in person or your contracts of employment will be terminated. That's all. So the, the absolute confusion and power dynamic, like that's his that's first all. big move. That's, that's his all. power move. That's his dick sling is he's coming in hot and fucking heavy. Right. And, but it's also strategic, I feel like. Okay. How many jobs have you been in that people in the position of higher up management actually have no clue what goes on in the day-to-day -day business. Oh, every single one. This is like the perfect example of someone who's in a position of management, just no no idea. They're just going to come in and do their own thing instead of like, yeah. instead of getting to understand what actually goes on, like on the ground. Like nobody, like they're just sitting up in their glass office, which he literally is doing and making unilateral decisions like if you're not here within the next hour you're fired oh for sure 100 percent agree and so i think this is like toxicity 101 right here in terms of upper let, me sit, let me sit in my ivory tower and dictate like a puppet master but i don't actually know what you do at least he's asking i'll give him that much a lot of people in power would probably be too afraid to ask for fear of looking stupid there it is again do you smell that okay here we go i i don't smell anything it's like putrid fruit or decaying flowers. Yeah, but also, why are we sniffing employees? Like, let's talk oh, wait, about the personal better, space. I feel like so that's this, the issue. So I also feel like that is where he starts really pushing boundaries with yeah. his immediate staff is when he starts sniffing them, which we're about to get into. No, it's not you. Ah. 10 o'clock, exactly. Let her in. I gave them all one hour. Wait, I noticed something else. She's right there if you just open them. Why should I make an exception for her? What's different about this employee from the others? Nothing. It's not as if she didn't have transportation. No, it was that line. It's not as if she didn't have transportation as in terms of referring to her wheelchair. That was her transportation. Oh, okay, you, what didn't, did you, oh you didn't notice that the first time? No. No, stop that. Well, it's like hitting everything. It's like, not only is she in a wheelchair, we're not is sure. Is she a woman? She appears to be a woman. We don't ever get to see her again or learn about her character, but she appears to be a woman. She appears to be a person of color and she appear appears to be in a wheelchair, although we don't know if it's a permanent disability. We don't know what's going on. But so up until he said, it's not as if she didn't have her own mode of transportation or whatever he says. How fucking kind of, toxic. I know, but I'm kind of with him because it's like, what's di what's different about her? Really, right? If she can do the job and she can, you know, so on one hand, I agree with him. Like, yeah, there's nothing different about her. Like she's just as capable as the rest of us. But he loses me where he says it's not as if she doesn't have her own transportation. It's like, okay, that's fucked up. And it's another power play. It's, it, you know? it is a power play. I feel like, I feel like in this instance, he is just like, here here is a situation where you would typically if you have a soul um have empathy right because we're right, right on the cusp of the time time stamp with that he's created and you know what there shouldn't be an issue with that she showed up at work on time okay she did however you know how some bosses are like if i make the exception for someone being you know 10 like 9.59 or yeah. like then I have to make exceptions for others. So again, he had me like, I was kind of like, okay, yeah, sometimes as a manager or, you know, the, the leader of something, you have to take a hard line, but it was 
the thing about it's not as if she didn't have her own transportation that yeah. he lost me on that because that's like beyond fucked up yeah okay, okay. Mo- moving forward a forward okay a little workplace place gossip here but i think it's warranted because this guy just appears out of nowhere doesn't seem to know what he's talking about or what the company does and then these two who are the main characters beside regis are like what's going on oh my god okay this is when i start really losing it hello i'm mr regis pato so during this part this part he's introducing himself to i guess the higher the higher level people of the company who all have their own offices on the same level as him and he inter- he says his name you know nice to meet you and then he leans in and sniffs them sniffs them and they're all like what's going on right now and they're and all standing a- there like little mini robots uh-huh and it is a blatant boundary push blatant for sure for sure for sure for sure so he's just going down the line. Oh, Mr. Regis Patel. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Regis has just identified where the smell is coming from. It's this guy, Ian. Oh, Mr. Regis Patel. <laughs> okay, but listen. If it offends you so greatly, I suggest you acquire a sponge and a bucket with warm soapy water if it offends you so greatly meanwhile he's been working out of this office where like blood splatter is all over the glass doors and windows so it clearly doesn't offend him so this is so weird we never know what he writes in his little books either like we don't know what he's writing what notes he's taking and how scary is it if your manager is writing notes and you just don't have any clue right or like stressful. it's very stressful she finds out patoff is going to fire ian who has the rancid smell yeah. and she goes into his office to clean the blood off the glass windows and that's a position of responsibility sam could always rely on me then i leave the matter to you and if i smell them again you're both fired how fucked up she's saying that she's a loyal employee so now he's gonna make her go do his bidding but like how much of this like you know what i mean like i'm just so um so many questions i have such as i'm curious to know what like she obviously right up front like let's talk toxic workplaces here she knew right up front that she wanted to be she wanted to keep her job and this was her way of keeping the job well once she figured out that the job she thought she was getting it no longer was available now she's like backpedaling and she's like i'm reliable i'm loyal employee even though 10 minutes ago she was trying to confirm the package from that other company called lobster so she's a little wishy-washy right this is such an important thing that's about to happen so we see ian coming up going back into his office with like a wooden box because I guess he's assuming he's going to get fired because the rumors are true. Yeah. Elaine is coming out of his office. He's like, what the hell's going on? And in there is the same bucket and sponge she had just used to wash off Sang's blood. Ew, ew, ew. Meanwhile, Craig now finds the exact moment in time that Regis Patoff comes into Compware um, on the archived video okay so we find out that regis padoff had no appointment with sang but sang ends up seeing him after him making him wait for about an hour there's no you can't hear anything but you can see what's going on in the office which becomes important a little bit later meanwhile ian is in his office closing the blinds because he's basically going to give himself a sponge bath because he wants to not get fired which like like something so trivial to get you fired it's like what a stupid way to fuck with someone's livelihood it's just really messed up right the whole thing is he's using the same sponge and everything i'm assuming elaine washed it a little bit and he's crying because this is so fucking demeaning 
Like it's demeaning, but like like how toxic is your workplace that you are literally sponge bathing yourself with the sponge that's just been used to wash your dead person, like your dead boss's shit off the how no, it's, be, it's beyond it's beyond anything ever. Oh, it's a hundred percent beyond the pale. Now we're about to see what goes down in sang's office with regis so you see sang signing the contract 14 minute conversation and sang is signing everything over so so now we have workplace harassment as well i just you know i feel like we're just all of the things so you see sang come from behind his desk and to take off Regis Patoff's pants and something sexual in nature ensues. And we have no idea what got him from signing the consultancy contract to the point where this is happening. We have no idea. Perhaps the creepiest part is the way that Regis Patoff is looking in the camera that he knows is there and his facial expressions during this period in time. It's a, it's lot. a lot. It's a lot. I mean, you have literally everything. You have um, like trivial reasons to possibly fire someone, um, arbitrary, like now there's a curfew for remote workers that nobody knew about to like a day earlier. All of a sudden people are back to work. Like it's just a lot all at once. Which I think is not good change management in a business at all, right? Like you're having a, you're on struggle street if this is. Right. And nobody, like, no, like they're shuttered for two weeks. Nobody knows anything. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden this happens. I don't know about you, but if it were me in this workplace environment, I would probably be acting very similarly to what's her name and what's his name? Elaine and Craig. Yeah. Cause I'd be like, what in the hell is actually going on? Who are these people? Where, who is this person? Where did he come from? Why is he acting like this? Like none of this makes any type of sense whatsoever. It's anyway. So I, I believe, I strongly believe that we are watching a very toxic workplace unfold we are i mean this is just episode one and keep in mind they're like about 29 to 35 minutes give or take per episode and there's eight episodes there's so much that happens i mean you're already setting up a situation where the balance of power is skewed where he's having people do his bidding people are very confused and the psychological safety is out the window. Not even, We don't know if there was anything prior to him, but now for sure. But I uh, find it really interesting that we've had so many of the people that we've interviewed talk about how toxic consultants can be. And I would love for us just, you know, to talk to a consultant and find out what it is that kind of gets or what it is about it that gives us that stigma like what's happened I mean like yes and is it is it like also like what level of consultancy um are we talking about because I think when people hear consultant they think like these very overpriced overpaid people from big big companies are coming in and kind of doing exactly what we're seeing here Whereas not all consultancies are like that. Like No, not all consultancies are like that. I will I will agree with that. But we've got this impression that that is. Right. Like, so why is the stigma there and how can it be destigmatized? Because, you know, not all consultancy is bad. And you how know? do we, how do we, what can we do to help shift that thinking, that mindset. And like, what if it is a big consultancy and it is toxic? What do we do then? Who do we talk to? Like, how do we, how do we make it clear that that's not okay? Or that that's, you know, what, what are we do? What are we doing with our time and our space to make the world maybe just a little bit better for someone? Also, like when a consultancy or consultant is called in why, why do businesses feel that they can't solve their own problems? Like, that's another question I have. I mean, sometimes it's lack of experience and maturity. Which um, we've spoken about many a time. Right. Um, oh, which, so 
<laughs> okay. Oh my God. I hold on. Let me fucking strap myself in. Hold on. I'm putting my fucking seatbelt on. Clip, Do it. Okay. Clip, so clip, clip, I woke ready. Nicola up this morning at some ungodly hour. I could feel little, the text message. I could feel it. With a little bit of juice from our old toxic workplace. So um, a very, very talented technical designer who I trust with everything. She is employed by my company, but she is also, she also does freelance. So through cool. me, she did a little, yeah, go for it. I'm never going to stop anyone from making money. Um, so she did a little freelance through the company Nicola and I met um, at my urgency because one of the things that they were missing was that technical aspect they would just send an idea to an overseas factory and expect the factory to just figure out figure it out and it's like you mm -hmm. don't want to do that that's poor business practice and product development okay so apparently the new do you want to tell the story I feel like you <laughs> would love to break the news to our toxies I just can't, I can't deal. And I just want to caveat this little juicy bit of tit bittiness is if these people would like to come on the podcast, if they've had a toxic experience, we would absolutely welcome you onto the podcast. We are basically, for, for the two people that we know have been directly affected, Nicola and I, they're the ones who got us fired. So I doubt they'll come on. But if, I mean, I have no hard feelings because I was oh. already on my way out. And I think at this point, Nicola is, look, it's, the whole company is a sinking ship, at which we're about to explain. Okay. So, so I was on, okay, let's start one step back. I was on LinkedIn the other day and saw true. that one of the product people so one of my direct reports who was under me while I was there is now looking for a job. For a job. And this was the this is the person that got me fired. Yes. So I was like, oh boy. Um, um, and then you got a text message this morning to say that the other product person. So the isn't person there who anymore. I Gate was so kind to bestow the creative director title to as a means of an olive branch has not been there and we don't know for how long um and apparently now the chief marketing officer and somebody who ran spotify are doing product development you mean Shop and shopify that's what i said no you said spotify <laughs> Did I? Oh my God. Okay. Shopify. Anyway. So, <laughs> so she, she was, she was great at shop Shopify. Like, Analytics. She, and I'm not sure why the CMO is involved because knowing what Nicola did, like, when are they going to find the time? Like, so the designer that, you know, I work with and who did a little work for them was basically like, you called it, they're a sinking fucking ship. And boy, are they. It's, you know what, realistically, like we we knew it was going to happen, but I'm just so disappointed that they didn't have a backup plan. Like, where is the backup plan? Where, why would you think that they would have, have one knowing what because we know? Because I had said you need a business continuity plan. Again, why would you think that they would take... E either of our advice because they never did Touché. never not once so shame on you for being like disappointed not really shame on you but you should have known better is my point like okay you should have fucking known better Touché. right Touché. yeah Touché. like it does not even though the people who were directly under me i don't believe were qualified to be there at least they were doing something like at this point so I'm very curious as to kind of what has unfolded behind the scenes that this is the outcome. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm, you know, those the two people on my team treated both of us so poorly that while I don't hold a grudge and at one point I probably would have been willing to help one of them find a position if they ever needed it, I no longer am because they they they're just I can't 
reconcile them as good people. It's like, I don't think they're actually qualified to do the job Yeah, that they're looking for. And that's sad. Maybe they should take some time off and like do a little like online great. learning or, you know, do take some courses or figure out a different path. Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, and I am not so interested in what happened to them. I'm more interested in what happened within the company. Yeah. What happened of- behind the scenes, but this yeah. is the results. I- Essentially, I just want to know if they were fired or they left. I have a feeling they were both fired. Interesting. You that's my that take. Feeling? What? I I I actually think I'm I'm gonna have a contradictory okay. approach to that. I think that they probably realized it was a sinking ship and maybe their loyalty was starting to wear a bit thin and fucking high tail. I think economy. maybe 50% of the equation the two people were talking about that might have noticed it but I still think that it was the only I think the only thing that they ever knew and they were too scared to go out on their own so I think at least 50 percent was fired um and I also think you know as I say if these people are wanting to chat to us the door which they won't Oh, the door's open. We know the you hate door us. Is wide open. But we we're big enough that we don't hate you. I don't you hate, hate us. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I mean that's your prerogative. But also, like, you know, maybe you understand why we were the way we are were now. Now that now. we're all on the other side, like, you know, I don't think they'll ever talk to us because one of them is so petty that the hatred they have for me is like the level of spite. And I think the other one's too scared. I know. I think the other one is uh, the her level of hatred for me is <laughs> like. Pass- I, so I think, I mean, no matter where you look, like even one of our more, more recent episodes, somebody said that the company sent out like a letter to some online communities saying that we were disgruntled employees. Uh, No, I'm not disgruntled. I am relieved and thrilled not to be part of it. Relieved and thrilled. That should be the name of our new podcast. Relieved and thrilled. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. No, I mean- Seriously, I, I like was pissed off. I was disgruntled for literally 48 hours. And then like, I was like, oh my God, no more slack. I don't have to worry about any of this shit. But like, I'm curious to know, how do I become a disgruntled employee when, okay. Uh, Cause I've been giving because this. Because we time. start, because the, the, because the impetus of the podcast was saying, listen, toxic workplaces are real for yeah. two bad bitches like us. We can't gotten, believe we got sucked up. We into can't us. believe. Well, okay. it could have been any workplace though that we met at. It happened to be that one. That one. But it could okay. have been but any of them. I'm curious to understand that from from my perspective, mm. how am I okay? How am I a disgruntled employee if I did not go on social media or talk about my experience or talk about anything for almost a year? I so didn't I, either. So then how does that then turn me into a disgruntled employee when I haven't even spoken to anybody about the situation until you and I started talking? Right. Until we kind of got our, and then it was many, many months before I even said, Hey, I've been thinking Let's about this. this podcast. And it was, and again, the actual place of employment could have been anything. It could have been IBM. It could have been Dell. It does. It didn't. It wasn't an attack on them. It was an attack on, holy shit! How did this happen? Why is this happening? Let's talk about it. Yeah, because how? Like for us, I think for us, the the key thing here is we created solidarity with each other. We've now identified like a, with all of the people we've interviewed. Every mm-hmm. single one of them. And they don't all come from the same company we met at. They come from every industry, any type every, of job, like, like tons of industries. But the same thing applies is they didn't realize they were looking at these red flags. They noticed some pink flags and they could have been red flags. 
but realistically, until you're out of it, you don't realize how toxic it actually is. And that's what happened with us. And that's not disgruntled. That's realization, awareness, self-reflection, and going, hang on a hot picking second. Yeah, I mean, if it if it suits their narrative to say that we're disgruntled, go for it. Because I was taught, you know, many years ago that like what makes a person is their motive. So it's like if you do something because you want to be, you know, insidious and rude and this, whatever, yeah, yeah. then you then you have an issue. If you do something with a pure motive and it just goes sideways, that's different. So it's like my motive is pure. I wasn't out here to ruin their business. I don't care about their business. This is an in this is a topic that's important. And anytime we talk to anyone, everyone's always like, this topic is not talked about enough. Yes, that's exactly it. Is so that's why all we were trying we to been, do. We have been praised in a number of episodes now we were like this is an important topic we like are girls doing, are doing important things doing and God's you're doing work. it <laughs> yes yes we're doing God's work Jesus but I me. mean yeah but anyway I just thought it was very interesting when we were called disgruntled employees and I apparently they put that in writing so, <laughs> which I think is hilarious because it's a big tell on the type of company they are Ugh. like they they utilized us and worked us to the bone when it suited them but the second it didn't suit them anymore you're disgruntled don't don't listen to them they're just disgruntled there are horrible people why would you ever listen to these people they're so disgusting and they're disgruntled and so disgruntled what a bunch of bitches yeah. So if anyone, I, it sounds like there's a lot of churn right now at that company. So if anyone, not even From the two that people company wants to come on and be completely anonymous, um, even if we, you want to come on and hate on us, like, please, that's, oh my God, come at us. We would love to hear that. I would just sit quietly and laugh every couple of minutes and then probably be like, you're right. I was like that. I, yeah, I have no well, problem sure. owning up to my own bullshit. So um, I think, I think both you and I are like that, right? Like yeah. oh, sure. tell us where we went wrong. Happy to take on the feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And I can tell you why I did it that way. And, and sometimes the answer might not please oh. you. Cause it might just be like, you're fucking annoying and you should have already known how to do that at the level you are supposed to be at well, sorry so you know but politics anyway um that's all I have to say about that but it was such I was in the gym when I got the text message and I was just like Holy what time shit. did you text me that message because honestly like my it was side... like it was like 8 a.m my time so it was probably like what 3 a.m your time the next morning Okay, so should I read the exact thing, but not? Yeah, just not, bleep, bleep, and you gonna, wanna, yeah. bleep. Okay. So me and the technical designer were talking about something slightly more relevant. And then she goes, on another far more entertaining note, the CMO of the old company bleep. reached reached out to me to see about any outstanding projects because... Beep and Beep, who were the two people who directly reported to me, are no longer with the company. Laughing emoji face. She, meaning the CMO, and another girl, girl who's the person who does the Spotify Shopify, the are now tasked with product development. Then she goes, LOL. I haven't heard from them in months outside of her reaching out a few weeks ago about a missing file. So I had nothing to report to the CMO. You called it. They seem like a sh sinking ship. My, my response was just like, I was like, yep. I was like- There is no way, okay, as the previous CMO, there is no way that I have the product experience to deliver any products. No. And it's, it's not- it's really it's technical. Right. So I don't understand like why those people were 
were tasked now to do supply chain and product development. Um, it is a very, very tricky area. And I wouldn't know how to do all the things you do, nor would I ever want to. That's not my my bag, baby. <laughs> you know, it's like- I can think of nothing less that I want to do as your job. I'm like- Right. And also like, it becomes very- like it becomes second nature to me at this point because I've done it so long, but it would be like teaching an old dog a new trick if I had to try to take over your role and, and vice versa. Vice like I just yeah. cannot, you need a specialist. I, I know this is going to sound really stupid, but you need a specialist to sort that out. Like, And sorry. also remember the revenue goal. And I came in and I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen the way you guys are set up right now. And I was like, poo-pooed. I definitely know it's not happening. Can you believe, it, but... hold on. Can you believe that we're like two, three months, two months, three months, two months in? Like two and a half months, yeah. Can you believe? No, and we're like so far ahead, which is like the overachievers in us. Cause like, we're already like recording episode two. I mean, season two. We're already okay. recording episode two, only two and a half months later. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops, sorry guys. No, um, but you know what we really need? We need more ratings. You know, that would be amazing. If we could like, have- Like, you more. don't even have to leave a comment. Just rate it. Just press just the- rate it. Just rate it. Oop. That's all you gotta do. Help a sister Oop. out. Help a sister Bibbidi out. Bobbidi boop. You know what? And if we get more beautiful sister- followers on LinkedIn, because we have so many over there now. We do. We do. Boop, boop for them. If you could please leave us uh, just a little wee rating. Just a wee one. That would be great. A couple stars. Also, I was wondering, Nicola, if at some point we want to reward our first like 50 people who rate us and subscribe to us with some custom merch that I can whip up for us. Oh, I'm, I'm kind of loving this. Would it, would it be a red flag? I don't know. I think we'd have to kind of come, I think a red flag would be incorporated um, into it somewhere. Um, (laughs) So excited. So Why don't we do this? So for the first 50 people who are not Gina or Nicola. And you know what? I feel like we need one of these consultant episodes. We will read out the, if you leave a review, we will read it out. Yeah. So, so for the first 50 people, so there's two different tiers, right? For the first 50, actually three. Sorry. I love how this is like right off the cuff. Let's go. Good morning. Ideas, girl. Let's go. Boobity boo. Oh my God. So exciting. Three different tiers. What are you wearing? What is that? It's a tie dye sweatshirt that I spent a lot of money on when I used to have money. Also, please give me money. I'm very, very poor right now. Yeah, ditto. Join the join the ditto club. (laughs) I know. I like I'm ridiculously poor. I haven't had an income, as you all know, for over a year and a half. Except for that few months that I was at said company. Okay, three tiers. Okay. First 50 subscribers will get a really awesome gift. Oh, wow. I okay. don't know what it is yet. I'm going to brainstorm it. Okay. But we have three subscribers right now. I believe. Three subscribers? Yeah. On what? Like the people who subscribe monthly. Oh, oh, you mean like monetary subscribers? Yes, monetary subscribers. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Sub- right. So, yes. I was like, no, we have some subscribers. Um, yes. No, no, no. We, no. Okay. So yes. people- okay. Monetary subscribers, the first 50 monetary subscribers, that includes Bob Bobberson. So um, we have Bob Bobberson. We have. Got, um, uh, those other cool people whose names we shall not mention. We just know, I don't know. We know Bob Bobberson isn't real because the email is not real either. It's like HHH5567HH. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> dot like, AOL dot Z. Yeah, so we know it's not real. So, um, so, so we won't be first... able to send Bob Bobberson a gift. No, but if you want to actually give us your, you know, at some point we'll reach out to these people 
and we will ask for their information so we can send them the gift. So first 50 sub monetar monetary monthly subscribers so excited. We'll, it's we'll get like a super, yeah, we'll get like a super awesome gift TBD. It might be a surprise. It's going to be a lot. Be good. It's going to be worth a lot more than the three dollars you use. Of course, of course, of course. Um, okay, then next fifty people who just rate us with the stars will get something as well. But hmm. don't expect it to be as big as. How do we reach out to these stuff? people? Because it's, it's kind of anonymous. Um, we could have people DM you know us what? on IG. They can screenshot it and send it through to the Instagram. Yeah, or yeah, screenshot it and then DM us. And for those who rate and review, you're going to get a pretty fucking awesome something or other that I haven't thought about yet, but I will soon. And we will well, announce you're, them. You're the product ideas girl. Yes, I'll come up with something. I'm going to come up with three tiers. So subscribers, monetary subs monthly subscribers get the best gift. People who rate and review get the second best gift. And people who just rate, meaning you just put a star on it, you don't have to say anything, will also get a gift, but don't expect it to be super duper amazing. It'll just be amazing. I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. Okay. So that is where we're at. And if anyone from our old workplace wants to come on, whether you hate us, love us, or want to kill us, we're here for that too. So on board. Okay. So um, in conclusion, stay tuned for consultant episode two when things, I mean, I feel like a lot of shit already happened in the first like 29 minutes of episode one, which was all of episode one. Yeah. Um, and then our little news, um, and then our new little incentive, Plan. our new incentive plan for all of our taxis out there. My God. I feel like also that those subscribers, those monetary subscribers, the more money you subscribe with, the better that gift is going to be. Yeah, for sure. I don't know what the gift is, but it'll be better. Well, we'll let once we know, we'll let you know because it, it's going to take me a little bit of time to figure it out and then get some mock ups done and some samples. Don't, don't call and, us, we'll call you. I, I, have an, I have a couple ideas, but I'm not going to say anything until Nicola and I decide for sure what it is. Okay. Okay. I'm so on board. Okay. Okay. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like to share your story, we would love to hear from you. Also, leaving a review helps us create more content because it shows us there's an interest in this topic. For those of our listeners who do better with reading, we have closed caption available on YouTube. See you next week, same time and same place.